just a heads up, this video will feature some discussion of the suicide of a historical figure. I'll be doing my best to mention it tastefully, but be advised. One of Egypt's most famous pieces of iconography is present on one of its most famous artefacts. This crest is called the Uraeus, and while it depicts the heads of two goddesses, it's a variation on a more traditional form, showing only one. The two goddesses here are the Vulture Nechbet and the Cobra Wadjet, and usually it is Wadjet who's shown on her own. Nechbet and Wadjet are very important deities, paired but kept distinct, unlike gods such as Amun and Ra, Horus and Ra, Montu and Ra. Although Wadjet, sometimes referred to by her title Wararet the Great One, was originally just the local protector of the Nile Delta, after the unification of the two lands she adopted a more general protective role over the whole of Egypt. Her head was therefore used as a symbol for places and people who were deserving of divine protection. You also see her showing up as a determinative in other goddesses, particularly ones with protective functions. This meant that the symbol became associated with royalty and thus took on another meaning, sovereignty and kingship. Remember that one of the epithets of the pharaoh was champion of the two ladies, the two ladies in question being Nechbet and Wajet. The Uraeus has its origins in Wadjet, but not all depictions of the cobra were depictions of the goddess. Here on Tutankhamun's throne are four Uraeus figures. No, I'm not saying Uraei, that way insanity lies. There are even more on these hieroglyphs, used in words for shroud, and the title of the Shrouded One, which was used to refer to Osiris and sometimes to the pharaoh's vizier. The name Uraeus comes from Egyptian ultimately, via Greek. The strongest contender for its origin is Yaret, which is traditionally simply translated as Uraeus, but also refers to a cobra with its head lifted about to strike. This seems pretty neat, but there's some contention, and an alternative hypothesis has its origin in Wararet, which referred to the White Crown of Upper Egypt, although Wajet was the protector goddess of Lower Egypt, the Red Crown one, so this seems more tenuous to me. The Egyptian cobra is venomous, so what's the connection between that and protectiveness? Well, while you might think of defence as something that stops an attack, you could also characterise it as a more effective attack, the best defence being a good offence and so on. Snakes are fairly impressive predators, subtle but deadly. Serpents have long enjoyed an association with medicine, in part because what they symbolise is the power of chemistry, but also because they symbolise deadliness. The medical paradigm of the ancient world, though it varied culture by culture, often saw sickness as the invasion of some hostile force. Medicine requires precision, tenacity, and the ability to do some pretty brutal things to save a patient. The serpent wound around Asclepius' rod never really left us. These days it dispenses cyclophosphamide. The Egyptian cobra was, according to some accounts, the animal which ended Cleopatra's life. Accounts actually contemporary to her suicide are few in number and ambiguous on her cause of death, but the idea of the snake lingers to this day. Asp is the term used, and it's not a very specific one. There are quite a few snakes that could be asps, and given the size of the Egyptian cobra, it's hardly a subtle thing to smuggle into the royal palace. I suspect the tale's longevity is in part due to the romance of Cleopatra calling upon this sacred animal, long seen as a protector of Egypt, to take her life. It's certainly a symbol Cleopatra would have been aware of. Perhaps she hoped that one last sacrifice, a pharaoh allowing herself to die by the bite of Egypt's most sacred defender, would protect the two lands from the predations of Rome. Alas for Cleopatra, and hopes for Egyptian independence, the power of the Uraeus had long since waned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that little thumbs up icon if you liked the video and to leave a comment telling me I'm either swell or massively wrong or something about aliens. Either way, it all ultimately helps me. The tutelary serpents adorning my crown are my backers at patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. Huge gratitude to them as always, and you know, maybe consider becoming one of them because it's always cool to fund your local amateur Egyptologist. Until next time, my fellow armchair Egyptologists, life, prosperity, and health to you all. Thanks for watching. Head over to my channel for more, or click here to see what the YouTube demons think you should watch next. I hope you'll consider subscribing. If you'd like to support and collaborate on the channel with me, go to patreon.com slash armchair Egypt. You can also join my Discord community, there's an invite link in the description.